In this video tutorial, we're going to take a look at how you can create professional AI animations. This video is specifically a workflow that you can use to create everything from spec projects to short films online. I gotta admit, there's a lot of information out there about the AI animation workflow. Most of the information I come across online is complete marketing fluff. And so my hope is that by the time you get done watching this video, you have an actual workflow that you can use to create really impressive projects. So let's hop in. So first things first, it all starts with story. And when you're working on an animation project, it's very important to make sure that your story is as good as possible. Of course, there are AI tools out there that can help you with the screenwriting process. The problem is a lot of people rely too heavily on those tools. And so it's very important for you to inject your own creativity into the process. So for example, we could hop over to ChatGPT and say, give me some quick story ideas. Basically, I have a dog and a squirrel. I want them to be working at a restaurant and basically the dog is going to find out that he is in fact allergic to peanuts. Of course, you know, there's all sorts of stories that we could come up with, we could do research about, but being able to use ChatGPT to quickly come up with a few different story ideas is super helpful. For a quick example, I created my own story about a dog named Chester going to a restaurant that only serves items with nuts in them. Essentially, he's like, I used to be allergic, but maybe I'm not allergic anymore. And he tries the burger and then he dies at the end. It's a very uplifting story. Now that the script is done, all you have to do is copy the script, take it to Sora, hit generate, and your animation is done. And I'm, of course, joking. I saw a lot of posts talking about how Sora is the best animation tool ever. And the truth is, it's really weird. It's really inconsistent. And when you're working on a professional project, the application is really not the best. I did want to do a quick test with some of the style frames that I'll talk about later in this video using Sora. And uh, here were some of the results. Yes. What about the curious nuggets? Yes. Oh, okay. What about the salad? Yes. They all have nuts in them. Come on, let's move it. It's been a while since I've really tried peanuts. I... What? Um, let, let's take a look at the other example. So, does the classic refuge burger have nuts in it? Yes. What about the curious nuggets? Yes. Oh, okay. What about the salad? Yes. They all have nuts in them. It's been a while since I've really tried peanuts, I guess. One classic burger, please. Say, this is pretty good. <laughs> It's like a weird AI fever dream. And I should note, those are the better generations that we got. So if you're working inside of Sora, it's going to be very tricky. The workflow I'm gonna show you in this video is a much more scalable process. So once you have your script complete, it's time to start doing some character development. My favorite tool for creating base quick imagery is still Midjourney. The tool is super advanced and has a lot of customization features that make it really appealing, especially in the character development process. So in order to create an image inside of Midjourney, all you have to do is go to the prompt box at the very top and type in your prompt. Basically, I'm looking for a 2D anime squirrel working in a burger restaurant. He's wearing a blue outfit with CR on his visor for Curious Refuge. And we'll go to settings and make sure that we are in a 16 by nine format. Our mode is in raw and then the version is in standard. Now I do like turning down stylization, weirdness and variety to zero because I wanna have maximum control over my outputs. And I should note I'm in turbo mode here. So what I like doing every single time inside of Midjourney is adding in the repeater code to create multiple iterations of the images again and again. It gives you more options to pick from we'll do dash dash r space and then you can put any number up to 40. For this one I'm just going to do five and go ahead and click generate. Okay let's check out some of our results. So you can see we have a bunch of images here and you know they're all kind of cool in their own way. Some of them are better than others like that's definitely uh, just a furry person that's not actually a squirrel. But of course some of the generations are actually kind of cool like uh, I love this like robot version of the character here and uh, this one's super cute. I think that would be like really fun to explore. But I think for the purposes of this video, I came across this image here and I really liked the aesthetic. I liked that it had almost that uh, kind of Spider-Verse tune shaded look on top of what looks like 
uh, almost classic storybook illustration. So a really interesting style. I wouldn't say it's as much anime, but I'm really enjoying this and I would love to explore this further. So of course, inside of Mid Journey, whenever you find an image that you like, you can go ahead and click the subtle upscale button to upscale the image and get maximum quality from the base image. And after a few seconds, we have our image here. We'll go ahead and download that to our computer. So for our next step, I want to explore what different characters will look like inside of this world. And for that task, I'm going to hop over to FreePick. So FreePick is basically an aggregator that brings in a bunch of different tools in the AI space from images and videos and upscalers. It's a really great tool. I highly recommend checking it out. So what we're going to do is go to the image generator section here. And once you're on the images page, go to model and make sure you're set to Google Nano Banana. So there we go. So now let's go ahead and drag and drop that image of our squirrel into the image references section. You can add up to eight images inside of this section, which makes it really helpful whenever you are trying to communicate information and create and edit photos. If you're not already familiar, Nano Banana is essentially a tool that allows you to create and edit photos. You basically can upload a reference photo and then manipulate parts of that image or even use that image as training data that allow you to create other images. And that's what we're going to use it for in this instance. So for our prompt here, I'm going to say, show the reverse shot of a purple chihuahua ordering food. He should be kind of dumb looking. I want to see the restaurant with booths and windows behind him. So giving more information for what we want the final generation to look like. And the cool thing is because we're using an intelligent image generator, it's actually going to bring in the same style. We don't really have to get into complex prompting. Now at the very bottom here, you'll see we have this quantity number. Let's go ahead and change that to four. We wanna get maximum output from free pick gives us just more options to pick from and we'll change the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 go ahead and click that generate button a couple of times and let's take a look at a few of our results here so we have this image number one I don't want uh, other humans in the background and it put him as the person who's behind the counter he should be ordering at this restaurant so not what I'm looking for we have this image here which is pretty good. I, it's okay. Not my favorite, but not bad. We have this image, which is definitely not what I was looking for. And then we have this image, which is really, really cool. I like this one a lot. I think that is a great character to have in our animation. So I'm going to go ahead and download that to our computer. Now for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through the process of generating the other characters, but you should know that we also have this character here of an alligator smoking a cigarette in like a really gross kitchen, which uh, I love this panel. This might be like my favorite uh, frame from the entire piece. Okay, so now that we have the characters that we're going to be using inside of our film, it's time to create a rough audio cut of what you want your project to sound like. Unlike shooting live action footage, whenever you're working on an animated project, it's very helpful to have a lot of the audio beats set in stone because it allows you to edit and figure out exactly how you want each shot to unfold. It also allows the animators to go in and match the movement of the lips whenever they are in the animation process. You can use any video editing application to create the rough audio cut, and I highly recommend working with a talented voice actor during this process. I'm not going to go into that in this video specifically, but if you wanna learn more about the advanced AI animation process, you can check out our AI animation course over at Curious Refuge. We go into everything like model training, working with voice actors, directing talent, everything that you would need to know in order to create a high quality animated project that's over on our website. But for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to move on. The next thing that we need to do is create a shot list so we know what images we actually need to generate. Now, there are tools out there that allow you to organize your shots but at the end of the day, most of the professional projects that we work on with studios actually just use a spreadsheet. And so you can totally use a spreadsheet to create your descriptions and then mark through the process. Now, for our example, I'm going to keep things super basic. You can have many more columns if you're working on a larger project or with collaborators. This is just my own personal project, so I'm going to keep it super easy. So I have a section for shot. 
a section for description, and then a section for the image status. We'll use this as we go through the process of putting together our animation. So now it's time to create the various shots that we need for our project. I'm not going to go through all 19 shots, but let's take the first one as a quick example. So the first shot is an exterior shot of the restaurant. And if we go to the script, the restaurant is called Refuge Burger. So let's hop over to Free Pick, And essentially all you have to do is upload the images that you do have that embody the style that you're looking for in the image reference section. For the prompt here, we can say create an establishing shot of this burger restaurant, make it called Refuge Burger. You can see we're not going into really a lot of in-depth prompting there. We can, but I always like to use simple prompting first and then to get more complex as you go. There's no reason to make it super complex on the front end and go ahead and click generate. So let's take a look at a few of our examples here. So we have this one here and uh, yeah, Chester sitting outside in the rain. That is definitely not what we're looking for. We have this shot here, which looks awesome. I love the style and aesthetic. I do not love that it put our squirrel character in two of the booths and then uh, Chester sitting at the booth as well. So you could work with Nano Banana to remove that, but I think we can find a different generation. We have this generation here, which aesthetically is already really, really good. But again, we kind of have the squirrel problem and it's definitely missing a facade there uh, on the front of the building, which is probably not great during the rain. And then finally, we have this shot here, which looks amazing. The amount of detail in this is it's truly incredible. Like Nano Banana blows my mind. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and download that to my computer. And then I would hop back over to my shot list. And for this one, we'll say done. So here's just a few shots that we're going to use inside of our project. You can see we have an establishing shot here. We have the shot of the alligator working in the kitchen. All of these shots look <laughs> so good. It's just amazing that you can put this together so easily. So there you go, there's our images. Now, one thing you'll notice from these images is the fact that they're a little low res. Now, there are other image editor tools that give you a higher resolution like Seed Dream. The problem is whenever you use those tools, they're not quite as intelligent when it comes to animation. So I definitely recommend using Nano Banana and then up the image. So let's go ahead and up the shots. For our example, I'm going to use Topaz Gigapixel. It's an incredible tool. All you have to do is drag and drop your images into the tool and you can change the upscale. For ours, I'm going to do times four and select the high fidelity mode. And just like working inside of Midjourney, we're going to make sure those sliders are set to zero. And you can see with the uh, slider here, it's pretty cool. This is before, very pixelated, and then after. You can see there's much, much more detail. And when you're ready, go ahead and click export images. Okay, so your images are now exported. If you wanted to, you could take these images, throw them inside of your video editing timeline, and just double check that everything looks right. It's almost like a storyboard cut of your animation. Sometimes you may find that, oh, actually I want a different shot here, or I'm gonna change the order. The AI animation process is incredible because you can literally make changes like that in the editing process, which is a huge superpower, and it gives you the ability to really refine your stories in a way that would have been much more challenging before the AI era. So now it's time to animate our images. And for this example, I'm going to use Google VO. So the reason why I like using Google VO is the fact that it has automatic lip syncing and audio generation directly inside of the tool. Now you probably remember we already recorded audio from our voice app actors, but the reason why I like using the VO feature is simply the fact that it has the lip syncing with the exact words that were spoken. That's a huge superpower compared to some of the other video tools that are out there. But I'm going to use Flow and they also have fast generations that give you unlimited generations, which is a huge perk. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate a shot. So all you have to do is go down to the box at the bottom. We'll change this to frames to video and to upload your image, just click that plus icon on the left there. And I'm going to select our shot of Chester standing at the counter. Again, that's this shot here. So for our prompt, we're going to say an animated 2D dog says, does the refuge burger have any nuts in it? And make sure that we are set to VO 3.1 quality and we will have our number of generations set to 
four. That gives us four generations. It just expedites the process. And go ahead and click Generate. So after a couple of minutes, you'll get your generations back. Let's take a look at a few of our results here. Does the Refuge Burger have any nuts in it? Not bad. Does the Refuge Burger have any nuts in it? That one's pretty good, but it's clearly raining inside of that restaurant. Does the Refuge Burger have any nuts in it? That's a pretty good one, and let's take a look at the last one. Does the Refuge Burger have any nuts in it? Okay, so we have some generations here, and a few of them are really not that bad. Now, of course, it's all a back and forth process. So for example, in these shots, all of the shots slowly zoom in on the dog, but maybe you want the camera to be static. Well, you can type in the prompt, camera stays still, and for the most part, it will stay still. You can also add much more information about how you want your character to look around the scene, the expression they want to have, and all of the other information that may be important for the performance of the animated character. Altogether, I'd say working inside of Google VO, it takes me about 12 shots before I find the one that I'm absolutely excited about. And one fun tip when you're working inside of Google VO is the fact that you can do first frame, last frame as well. So for example, we have this shot here of the fly, and then we have the second shot of the spatula basically squishing the fly, and we want to animate between those two shots. Well, that's actually super Super easy. All you have to do is go to your first frame, we'll upload the shot of the fly, and then the last frame, and we will have the shot of the spatula. And we'll just say the spatula quickly squashes the fly along with some other prompting there, and go ahead and click generate. And that resulted in this shot here. So you can see even in that final shot, there's some weird stuff that you're going to have to cut around in the editing process but it's all part of the process, you know, picking and choosing the exact frames for the story that you're trying to tell. So now you'll go in and generate all the shots for your animated sequence. Once you're done generating your shots, you'll edit them all together with the original audio. Now that can lead to a problem where some of the lips of your character performance will not match the original audio that you uploaded. So rather than using third-party tools like Runway Act 2 or some of the other lip syncing tools that are out there that are personally, I don't think that good, what I would recommend doing is working with your voice actor to do ADR, which is basically send them the video clips and have them re-perform their voice to match the specific lips. 80% of the time, you can use editing techniques to cut away or to match up the lips, but in some cases, you may simply just need to work with them to get another performance. So once you have your edit locked, you can now go in and up-res your video footage. You can, of course, up-res your videos before you begin editing, but you know, it's usually better to work with a proxy and then up res later just to help save with GPU time. So we have different shots here and I'm going to be using Topaz Video AI to up res my shots. I'll go ahead and drag in one of our shots here. You can see we have the result on the right here. And for the output resolution, you can select whatever makes sense for your project. I'll just select 4K in this instance and turn down recover detail. So there's a lot of different models that you can use. Proteus is the default model, and I think it's really, really great. We'll make sure we have no grain applied. We're not gonna do any focus fixing. And of course, you can change the frame rate if you need a different frame rate for the project that you're working on. This is a film project, so we'll keep it in 24. And go ahead and click export. So there you go, there's an animation workflow that you can use to create impressive projects. Now, are there problems with this workflow? Yeah, definitely but there's problems with any creative workflow. It's really up to you as the director to go in and have an eye for detail and to direct these tools to get the specific output that you're looking for. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Of course, if you have any tips for using any of the tools that we talked about inside of this video, we would love to hear about it inside of the comments. And if there are any videos that you'd like us to make here on the platform, be sure to let us know. Like and subscribe, it's super helpful for the channel. And if you wanna get the latest AI film news sent directly to your inbox, you can subscribe over on curiousrefuge.com. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.